السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم I just want to know um, am I clear enough can you hear me clearly and is the screen uh, can you see the presentation Very clear enough uh, we can hear you and we can see your screen as well you move the next slide so I can tell you how the text looks Is there, is there any way in which you can make that screen a bit uh, bigger? Is it embedded in a, in a... It's fine. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, okay. 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 I'll give you a message to you. In the name of Allah, Today's topic is miracles. It's, uh, it's something... It's a bit a tricky topic to do. Um, there's many... Uh, different views on about miracles and some people accept miracles some people don't accept miracles um the definition of a miracle is an effect or extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is described to a supernatural cause and in the arabic uh, the word used to describe miracles usually is mujiza The mojiza is the extraordinary sign with which Allah supports his prophets and messengers and challenges people. Just a little bit more about mojiza from a traditional point of view. The mojiza is meant to be done openly and be seen and known by many people. And the one for whom it is done is enjoined to show it openly. The mojiza may be accompanied by a challenge and claim of prophethood. The fruits of the mojiza bring benefits to others. The mojiza may be any extraordinary event the mojiza is only for the prophets the prophets use their miracles to establish proof against the mushrikeen because their hearts are hard this is from the islam qa not info website and a bit more about miracles or mojiza the the mojiza are not found in the quran and um, the verses which do so sort of mention any miracle or is translated as miracle the word used in those verses is ayah uh, i've quoted uh, surah 6 verse 35 to 37 in a view sabir ahmed's translation because he generally doesn't believe in miracles but he uses the miracle to trans, uh, translate the word ayah i'll read surah 6 verse 35 onwards if the rejection is hard on you Know that even if you dug a tunnel in the ground or climbed a ladder into the sky and brought a miracle for them, they still will not believe. If it were Allah's will, he could assemble them to guidance, but he wants them to make free decisions. Be not among those who are carried away to ignore the law. Only those can accept to hear and listen with an open mind. The loving dead will only listen when they use their faculties or when Allah will raise them to the second life and to him will they be returned. they say if only a miracle could come down to him from his lord say allah surely has the power to send down a miracle but sorry i think we lost your screen there sorry can you back yeah can you hear me yeah we can hear you okay so <laughs> connection word 37 
وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ So the, the word ayah is the, uh, the word which is generally translated as uh, miracles. But ayah, as you know, is not uh, only miracle, it's translated uh, in a few different ways. Uh, the most common, as you know, is the ayah or the verses of Revelation. This is from just two examples of it, Surah 2, verse 1 or 6. Sorry, we lost you again. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Your screen is gone. Okay, I'm going to try to. I don't know if it's my internet connection, maybe. Okay, it's fine. We good, okay? We can see. Hello, am I, am I okay? Can you hear me? We can hear you now, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the, this uh, Surah 2, verse 106 and Surah 12, verse 1, Alif Lam Ro, these are the symbols of verses of the perspicuous books. So like 12, 12, verse 1 is one of the most common uh, beginning of uh, many surahs, the Tilka Ayat or Kitab al Mubin. So this is just two examples of the word Ayat used for revelation. The next example is ayat is also used for signs in nature. Surah 2 verse 164, beholding the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day in the sailing of the ships through the ocean for the profit of mankind. In the rain which Allah sends down from the skies and the life which he gives their worth to an earth that is dead. In the beasts of all kinds that he scatters through the earth in the change of the winds and the cloud which they trail like the slaves between the sky and the earth. Yeah, indeed, are signs for people that are wise. So just an example of a verse where signs uh, or, or, or uh, nature is used as uh, signs or ayah. And then the third uh, instance that we find that the word ayah you use is in that uh, examples for us that we learn lessons from. So Surah 3, verse 13, there has already been for you a sign in the two armies that met in combat. One was fighting in the cause of Allah, the other resisting Allah. These saw with their own eyes twice their number. But Allah does support with his aid whom he pleases. And this is a warning for such as have eyes to see. A second example, Surah 10 verse 92. Thus they shall be saved you in your body that you may be assigned to those who come after you. But verily, many among men are heedless of our signs. And the third verse, Surah 12 verse 7. Verily in Yusuf and his brethren are signs. Uh, symbols for seekers after the truth. So like um, the, the, the body of Pharaoh or, or a sign in that, uh, the battles of the, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi the lessons that can learn, these are, are also examples of the word ayat used. So it's not only uh, used in terms of revelation or of miracles also. Then the, the, the verse which sticks out to me is uh, a question that uh, ayah refers to miracles as well, is Surah 17, verse 59. And we refrain from sending the signs only because the men of former generations treated them as false. We send the she came out to the Tamud people to open their eyes, but they treated her wrongfully. We only send the signs by way of terror and warning from evil. Um, many commentators also translate the signs in, 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 in this uh, verse, in the commentaries as meaning uh, miracles. Uh, so the questions that what signs were stopped? The ayah that was stopped, revelation continued to come to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Signs in nature are still all around us. Lessons from the past are still there for us to take heed. But miracles like that of the previous Ambiya has stopped. So this is the first three we know it couldn't have been stopped. Uh, because the revelation continued, the signs in nature are still all around us and the lessons from the previous generations. But miracles is something that we, we, we don't see today. Um, the people or the, the prophets, uh, 
Zambia were, were challenged by the people all the time to, to bring miracles. Uh, Surah 17, verse 90 to 93, they say, we shall not believe in you until you cause a spring to gush forth for us from the earth, or until you have a garden of date trees and vines and cause rivers to gush forth in their midst, carrying abundant water. Or you cause the sky to fall in pieces, or you say, well, as you say, will happen against us. Or you bring Allah and the angels before us face to face. Or you have a house adorned with gold, or you mount a ladder right into the skies. No, we shall not even believe in your mounting until you send down to us a book that we could read. Say, glory to my Lord, I am nothing but a man, a messenger. And so that in one verse 5, nay, they say, these are medleys of dreams. Nay, he forged it. Nay, he is but a poet. Let him then bring us a sign like the ones that were sent to the prophets of old. So in the first set of verses, uh, it shows that the people wanted extraordinary things to come to them, extraordinary signs for them to, to see that uh, the, the prophet is telling the truth and that there is a God who created them and they will be uh, brought back to. And Surah 21 verse 5 indicates that these people heard or, or may have heard of, of these extraordinary events happening by other uh, other nations in times gone by as well. And they, they said they want to see the same. Um, but uh, what does Allah tell them in reply? They say, it may be that you fret your soul with grief that you did not become believers. If such were our will, we could send down on them from the sky a sign to which they would be uh, they would bend their necks in humility. But there comes not to them a newly revealed message from Allah most gracious, but they turn away therefrom. They have indeed rejected the message, so they will know soon enough the truth of what they mocked at. Do they not look at the earth, how many noble things of all kinds we have produced therein. Fairly in this is a sign, but most of them do not believe. So the people asked for, asked uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for these uh, supernatural signs, supernatural occurrences. But what Allah is telling them here is that there is a, a, a message that is revealed to him and look around them at the earth. And these are the signs that uh, we should be looking at rather than the supernatural signs. Uh, so here's just a list. It's a short list of some some uh, perceived miracles from the Quran. So there, there is many others that people uh, probably will add to this list, but I'll just read it quickly. Uh, Salih al Islam, the camel, Ibrahim al Islam, uh, bringing the bird to life, fire that was made cool for him, having a child in old age while his wife was barren. Musa al Islam, the star becoming a stake, splitting the sea, and there's a whole lot of Musa al Islams as well. Uh, Dawood al Islam and Suleiman al Islam speaking to animals, just one example, and there's many other examples also that uh, seem miraculous with them. Zakaria al Islam, child in old age, while wife, parent, similar to Ibrahim al Islam. Isa al Islam raised the dead, uh, the bird from clay, uh, curing the sick, etc. The feast from heaven, his birth also. Maria al Islam, uh, he having the fruits out of season. Um, that's Habul Kaf that slept for 300 plus years, and uh, Uzer, or the one that came by a helmet in ruins, uh, died and was resurrected after 100 years. Uh, if you look at these signs, the ones that I've marked in red, if you read it, uh, these uh, verses in the Quran, that there doesn't seem any supernatural or anything out of the ordinary in the signs that were sent to them. The, the camel of Saleh, they, they didn't want to say, share the resources of the camel. Ibrahim al Islam bringing the bird to life doesn't uh, talk about cutting up the birds. Uh, Maryam uh, alayhi salam, the fruits out of season. If you look further on in the story, she is told to shake the branch of the tree so that the, 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 the dates may fall. So it doesn't seem that there, there was anything out of the ordinary in this. The ones marked in blue, possibly people can uh, describe it away and uh, it may not seem as miraculous, uh, perhaps, and they may be. Uh, argument to a uh, rational explanation for it. The ones that I've left in black to me, uh, although uh, uh, if you look at, uh, if you read Shabir Ahmed's translation, for example, he, he explains most of them away. But to me, I think these uh, uh, could be question, uh, questionable or po of possible really actually being out of the ordinary events. Okay, so the argument against miracles, those that, that say that uh, this, there isn't anything as miracles is example in Surah 35 verse 43. On account of the arrogance in the land and the plotting of evil, but the plotting of evil will hand them 
oh, oh, in only the authors thereof. Now are they but looking for the way the ancients were dealt with. But no change will you find in Allah's way of dealing. No turning off will you find in Allah's way of dealing. So is this the, the verse? Well, and, uh, uh, I may have got the Arabic wrong there, sorry. But uh, most of these occurrences where Allah says there's no change in, uh, in dealing with, uh, no change in the way of Allah in dealing with the people is usually in, uh, uh, in, in how Allah, in the context of how Allah deals with the evildoers, the hypocrites, etc. Um, so uh, it's possible that, uh, that, that the no change in Allah's way is mainly in how he deals with the wrongdoers and uh, um, there could be a, a slight bending of the law, uh, not necessarily a bending of the law, but within the confines of the, the laws of physics as well for these uh, other occurrences to happen. So uh, why, why I mentioned this is there, there seems proof in the Quran that Allah intervenes in uh, the, the, the life of his servants. One example is Surah 33, so, uh, verse 9. Oh, you believe, remember the grace of Allah bestowed on you when they came down on your host to overwhelm you. But we sent, them, uh, we sent against them a hurricane and forces that you saw not. But Allah sees clearly all that they do. The setting is in reference to Surah Ahzab when the, when the, 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 the pagans and, and they brought a whole lot of confederates with them and they surrounded uh, Medina and even the Jews uh, joined them at, 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 at parts. Um, but here Allah says, we sent against them a hurricane and forces that you saw not. It seemed that it wasn't just that they, 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 they had the timing wrong in the natural, uh, you know, it, a hurricane came, but it was sent by Allah. 51 verse 31 to 34, Ibrahim said, and what, oh, you messengers, is your errand now? They said, we have been sent to a people deep in sin to bring on them, to bring on, on them a shower of stones of clay, brimstone. Mark this from your Lord for those who trespass beyond bounds. So this is the two uh, visitors that Ibrahim al Islam said, uh, uh, had. And uh, they were on their way to loot al Islam to bring on destruction. So these two seem they were sent by Allah on a mission specifically for this. So um, it wasn't that uh, the, uh, the natural, they were just destroyed by uh, a natural uh, earthquake or whatever it was, a volcano, a volcanic eruption, whatever it was. But it seems like these, these two, many uh, understand them to be angels were the catalyst for, for the destruction to happen. Another example of Allah intervening is of that Musa Islam, especially in his early life. In Surah 28, <clears throat> verse 7, so he sent this inspiration to the mother of Musa, suckle your child, but when you have fears about him, cast him into the river. But fear not, nor grieve, for we shall restore him to you, and we shall make him one of our messengers. And we ordain that he refused suck at first until his sister came up and said, shall I point out to you the people of a house that will nourish and bring him up for you and be sincerely attached to him. Thus did we restore him to his mother that her eye may be com comforted, that she might not grieve and that she might no know that the promise of Allah is true. But most of them do not understand. So here it seems that Allah SWT made it so that um, Musa al Islam will be saved to be brought up in the household of Pharaoh and also that he will be uh, reunited with his mother so that he said, we ordained that he refused suck at first so that no wet nurse uh, could feed him, but he only could uh, be fed by his mother. So it seems that there is an intervention of Allah out of the ordinary year. Um, now I'm just gonna go through a couple of examples of the word ayat used in uh, a context which seems miraculous. The first one is sort of five verse one on four of the table from heaven. Said Isa, the son of Maryam, O oh Allah, our Lord, send us from heaven a table set with vines that there may be for us, for the first and the last of us, a solemn festival and a sign from you, and provide our sustenance, for you are the best sustainer of our needs. Uh, Ayat is used uh, again in the Surah 2, verse 29, the example of uh, what people say is. Uh, he said, nay, you have tarried thus a hundred years, but look at the food and your drink. 
they show no signs of age and look at your donkey and that we may make of you a sign unto the people. Look further at the bones, how we bring them together and clothe them with flesh. When thus was shown clearly to him, he said, I know that Allah is power of all things. And another example, Surah 20, verse 18 to 23, again of Musa al-Islam, he said, Allah asked him, what is in your, in your hand? He said, it is my rod, on it I lean, with it I beat down further for my flocks, and in it I find other uses. Allah said, throw it, O Musa. He threw it, and behold, it was a snake active in motion. Allah said, seize it and fear not. We shall return, at once to its, return it at once to its former condition. Now draw your hand closer to your side. It shall come forth white and shining without harm or stain as another sign in order that we may show you two of our greatest signs. So the two signs are described here as, uh, as ayah, the word used. Okay, so just uh, looking a little deeper at uh, some of the events that I mentioned earlier, Ibrahim al Islam and the fire. Uh, Surah 21, verses 68 to 69. They said, burn him and protect your gods if you do anything at all. We said, oh fire, be cool as a means of safety for Ibrahim. In verse uh, 68, kalu harikuhu. So they actually meant to, to, to burn him. If you look at uh, the similar occurrence of the word Hariku is uh, Surah 20 verse 97 where Musa al-Islam burns the golden calf and one example of the fire of hell Surah 3 verse 181 which occurs many uh, times where it is also talked about really burning. And uh, in the next verse it talks about the nar being wakulna ya naru kuni burden. So the nar, the fire, uh, Allah uh, says to be cool and, and it's not necessarily it seems to be a physical fire to, because the people want to burn him. And this is um, a, a physical fire which Allah says to be cool. Uh, the next, the next uh, example is the stick of Musa a.s. Then Musa threw his rod and behold, it was a serpent plain for all to see. Uh, the Arabic clearly says it was a serpent, doesn't, um, uh, says it moved like a something. It said it was a uh, uh, so Um The other thing is uh, I saw uh, the I saw the translation is uh, why why I'm mentioning this is if you if you look at uh, if you read Sabir Ahmed's translation, he translates I saw as as confidence and conviction or something like that. But uh, Surah 20 verse 18, uh, Musa al Islam says that it is my rod, it is my I saw on it I lean what it I be down further for my flocks and in it I find other users. So it seems to be a physical stick which he had with him. And this stick actually turned to, to the snake. Um, again, Musa al Islam crossing the sea. So he uses his sword to, to, to strike the, the sea. So that, uh, that I think is in the next verse, but uh, let's read this verse 20, verse 77. He sent an inspiration to Musa travel by night with my servants and strike a dry path for them through the sea without fear of being overtaken by Pharaoh and without any other fear. So what I'd like to focus here is the word Yabasa. Uh, uh, Fil Bahri Yabasa. So uh, a dry path, it's not just a path, it's a dry path. So the word Yabasa is used to uh, uh, describing the path as being dry. Uh, and then on the same event, Surah 26, verse 63, then we told Musa by inspiration, strike the sea with your rod, so it divided and each separate part became like a huge firm mass of a mountain. Um, the, 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 the word is used toad, katod, katod, which means a, a, a mountain on each side. So kuluf firkin, so each each part on it uh, of the, the it, so it split in two parts and each part was like a mass of mountain on, 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 on both sides. And from the pre previous verse, we see that the path was dry for them as well. So it seems that this was actually, it wasn't just low tide as, as, as some describe it to be, or actually see that even uh, some Jews believe that uh, uh, they, they went into this and there is a uh, event where is wind or something that uh, also like uh, like the low tide, it splits the, the, the water, the uh, uh, body of water at the spot so that you can actually, it creates a path where you could walk through. But uh, these, uh, these verses uh, mention dry path one and the second it mentions uh, of uh, like a mountain on either side. And uh, um, those that saw the cartoon, uh, 
prince of Egypt cartoon, they, they draw the, the crossing and they show like a big mount, like a wall of, of water on either side and almost like you in, in an aqu aquarium. Uh, just a picture like that, this first doesn't seem uh, too far off to me. Um, so that's uh, looking at uh, l just a little deeper at the verses describing uh, these uh, verses, which seem uh, out of the ordinary. What is important is that uh, when looking at medical is that it wasn't the, the prophets. If you look at all instances where Isa al Islam is, where he, he, he cures the, the sick and uh, raised the dead or made a figure of a bird from clay and it became life, all it says by the permission of Allah. So Surah 40 verse 78, we did a four times send messengers before you. Of them, there are some whose story we have related to you and some whose story we have not related to you. It was not possible for any messenger to bring a sign except by the leave of Allah. But when the command of Allah issued, the matter was decided in truth and justice and they uh, perished there and then those who stood on falsehood. So it's not the power of the, the, the Ambiya or the messengers but it is Allah that sends these signs. Or if you want to read the signs as a revelation, um, it's the same thing. It's not the, in the power of the, uh, the messengers to bring the revelation, but Allah sends it when he wishes. Um, the time of miracles is over. So the Musa al-Islam may have had miraculous events, but as we came, uh, we, 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 uh, we came across the earlier verses where Allah says that the revelation and the signs in nature around it, the people must look at and stop asking for, uh, asking the prophets for these uh, uh, extraordinary events. So the six verse one and nine reads, they swear their strong oaths by Allah that if a special sign came to them by it, they would believe. Say, certainly all signs are in the power of Allah, but what will make you Muslims realize that even if special signs came, they will not believe. So, um, uh, Allah is telling the 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 the, Korea, the Arabs, I think, at this time, that uh, if if any uh, miracle, miraculous events come, and you still will not believe, and that's again looking back at Surah 17, verse 59, where Allah says He stopped sending signs because the people uh, treated them as false. So, in conclusion, not all events thought to us to be miraculous were actually miracles. If you read the verses of the Quran. We see some of them are clearly there doesn't seem anything out of the ordinary in in these events. In it, the, the, the battles we've seen with Musa al Islam in his young age, uh, there may be other uh, instances as well where it seems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, destruction of the people. It wasn't just that um, uh, uh, things may have happened. It seems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put a catalyst for it so that it happens at a specific time. Then rather than it taking its natural course, uh, previous MBI have been aided by miracles, but the people still rejected Allah SWT. Allah, Allah SWT has stopped sending these miracles. We should look at revelation, nature, and history for the signs of Allah. So if you're looking for signs of Allah nowadays, we got the Quran with uh, the, the, the words of Allah with us. And in the, in the words of Allah, we are told to look at nature all around us, and we are told to look at uh, past generations and learn from their mistakes. Okay, shukran. That's my presentation for today. Okay, Zakhar Sadiq, uh, interesting outcome. I'm sure we can have lots of questions. So uh, let's uh, not waste any time and get into the questions immediately. Uh, I'm going to go to participants. I'm going to take the hands raised first. I see a man hand up. Uh, Aman, your hand is up. What's your question? Salam, how are you? Salam, how are you? All right, sugar. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for that uh, talk. It was uh, very uh, enlightening. I just, I just like to ask, um, or maybe sort of point out and ask questions at the same time. And where I'm coming from is. Uh, with your conclusion, not all events taught to us to be miraculous were really miracles. Now, just remember what the definition of a miracle generally uh, is nowadays in science. It's science that is unexplained. So what might have been a miracle 2,000, 4,000 years ago can easily be explained nowadays. Um, 
maybe not all the miracles we have seen in the Quran has been explained because we haven't quite got to the to the top of the scientific world where we understand everything of, of all of Allah's laws because Allah's laws in essence is science. So he created the heavens, the earth, the uh, physics, gravity, um, everything. So I just, from, from my perspective, I, I feel that all miracles is just science unexplained. And maybe in a hundred or 200 years, we'll understand why Musa threw down the stick and why it turned into a snake um, in a scientific basis, maybe we don't understand it now, but um, we will. And all the verses keep reflecting to Allah's laws not changing. So maybe Allah is saying to you, the science is not changing. It's not only um, it's not only uh, with regards to what what you think is happening with people. Allah's changes. There's no change to His science. We just haven't figured out what His sciences are. I mean, we're just brushing the surface of quantum mechanics now. Um, and they showed with quantum mechanics, it could be linked to um, where anthropologists have shown that with every nation uh, in history, every nation that has gone against Allah's laws, we're going to say they've sinned. Um, there's been a natural disaster that comes uh, after it. And scientists are saying now it's, it's, it's something to do with quantum mechanics because the people doing wrong affects um, affects the nature around them. So when you sin, and it's a, it's it's not Allah directly intervening. It's because Allah set His laws. If you don't follow His laws, you sin. Then you will get punishment of it. But His laws are set. His laws were set when He created the Big Bang or whenever He did that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is. Whilst we understand Allah can, he has an unlimited power. He can create a snake from a rod if he so chooses. He keeps saying his laws doesn't change. When we say, look at his laws, I think we need to understand his laws are scientific, science, physics, chemistry, um, cosmology, et cetera, et cetera. And when, when, when he says that his laws don't change, we need to reflect that it's his laws. We need to maybe learn from it and say, what scientific hypothesis can we get from Musa alayhi salam's uh, rod turning into a snake? So it's not, um, it's not something that he chose to do where he actually turned a wooden staff into a, into a creature that's a living creature with lots of organisms, uh, organs and stuff like that. So that's just my understanding of uh, these verses. Okay, Zakala for your comment, Iman. Uh, Salif, you want to comment on that? Yeah, I agree, agree with you to an extent, but uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, there, is, there does seem to be that Allah intervenes sometimes, uh, which seems out of the ordinary, and uh, why it specifically chose it versus what the, what the crossing is. The, the, it seems to be more than just a, a rational explanation of low tide or or, or, the, or, or wind blowing a pathway through it. It seems to be that it was a bit more than that. Although I do agree with you in general that uh, most of most of it should well conform to the laws of the nature as Allah said it. Okay, let's move to Aziz. Aziz. Sadiq, salam alaikum, and everybody else. Salam alaikum. Um, Sadiq, in your first thing, uh, you, you mentioned the um, definition of mu'jiza. Now, I, if I, I, didn't, I didn't hear you clearly, but did you say that the word doesn't appear in the Quran? Yeah, I, I don't find any use of the mu'jiza in meaning miracles in the Quran. The, the, the root word is found elsewhere, but not in the, 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 the form of, of miracles as okay. it is. Yeah. I, right now, I've got four dictionaries open in front of me. Uh, okay. The root word is ajaza, and nowhere in the Quran and none of the dictionaries that it is used for a miracle. Okay? Uh, but if we look at uh, what's his name? Um, Lane's, Lane's lexicon. He actually s says that the prophets were assisted with miracles, but 
Mo when he's talking about Mojiza, obviously, uh, he says that these were factors against the natural phenomenon. Right? So it's against natural laws. Uh, and and then I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to go too much in detail. Uh, just one question worries me is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of everything. Okay? So he would be aware, I mean, if there were miracles performed by anybody, he would be aware of the results of those miracles or the consequences of the miracles. That the people, as, as you pointed out in, in a few, few verses, that the, even though Allah would show them a miracle or send a miracle down from the sky, they will still not believe. So why take the trouble? All right? They will not believe. Allah knows they're not going to believe. He's aware of the future, so why take the trouble? Right? Why confuse the issue uh, uh, with, with uh, bringing about miracles? Uh, you know, um, Aman was talking about science and all that. Uh, I, I, a couple of days ago, I came across something. Uh, I was looking at some uh, notes on physics on the internet. About 30 years ago, the physicists in this world discovered something, a phenomenon in, uh, in, in, phys in, 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 in physical science. In, in, uh, and actually, the, the way that the, the discovery was made, they were forced to call it the Moses effect. Right? And this was 30 years ago. And I'm not going to explain it. Uh, I would recommend that everybody who's got to, uh, what you call it, internet, go and look it, look it up and it will surprise you. Just one more point uh, that uh, uh, you, you spoke about um, the baby Musa refusing to suckle the, the breast of uh, strange uh, women. And that was one of the miracles of Allah that Allah has, because Allah had promised to send him back. I don't know if you have come across this, that refusing to suckle the breasts of other people is quite a common feature in humanity. Sometimes babies just don't, right? Because babies are aware of the fragrance, the smell, the, you know, the, the, the environment of the mother. And, if, and all that is not, in, not present, naturally not present, they would not suckle the breast. I mean, this is a natural phenomena. It's, it's, no, it's no miracle. One more point, and then I will say goodbye. Uh, in chapter 13, verse 40, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I'll read the me a meaning. And we, uh, Allah says to the Nabi, and we will either let you see part of what we threaten them with or cause you to die, right? Of course, naturally, uh, for only the delivery of the message is incumbent on you. Right? While calling them to account is our business. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the Nabi to perform some miracles, he wouldn't just em emphasize the fact that your job is to pass the message, not to perform miracles or anything like that. And this is a very beautiful verse, 1340. But if you read the verses that follow, it makes it even more interesting. And for now, uh, I'll stop there, Sadek. Yeah. Okay. Zakir Aziz. Uh, Sadek, you want to comment on anything or can I move on? I can move on as well. Okay. Uh, Tazmin. Next on the list. There you go. Unmute it. You got a question, comment? No, Jazakallah. I don't have anything to add. Kakhalik. Kakhalik. No, okay. Sammy. Kakhalik. Okay, Kakhalik, there you go. You unmute it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Press. Yeah, just have to let everything's okay on my side, eh? Okay, perfect.
Baik, Syekh Abdul Samad. Assalamualaikum, Sadiq. Alhamdulillah, it's a wonderful presentation. But uh, oh. as the second person was Amin, was it Amin? So it's a combination of as Sadiq al Amin. I see. What happened is that uh, you mentioned about things that were miraculous sometime and then it changed. And I will look at it, this concept of miracles from the point of view from chapter 3, verse number 7, where Allah tells us, He is one who revealed the kitab, the scripture. And he says, In these clear verses, at whom hunna umul kitab okhara mutashabihat. Now, what we find that throughout history, as it was pointed out by the second person, that man he saw things as miracles. Actually, as the Quran says, they are mutashabihat. Now, one good example, you see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in chapter 6, verse 115 and 115, that that Tammat Kalimat to Rabbi Wadlan, that Allah's words are complete. La Mubaddilali Kalimatillah. There's no change to the words of Allah. Now, one good example of, of, a, of a so called miracle, if you look at it, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you see, when he tells us in chapter six, right, that, that how can I have a son, right? How can I have a son when I do not have a partner? You see, now you find that people will tell you this is a miracle that Jesus was born without the agency of a male. But Allah is challenging that. That is not his law. You see, how can well, I can you see how can I have in the chapter six, right? And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says that I cannot well, I, I cannot have a, a son without the agency, with a, with, a, with a partner. So that is Allah's laws. Even Jesus, you say he was born with the immaculate conception, will be against the law of nature. You see. Then we come to certain things that perhaps some people will count it like Ya Naru Kuni Bardam was Salaman Allah Ibrahim. Right, become cool and peaceful on Ibrahim. Now we have been witnessing from our childhood days. You see, what exactly happened is when when these people they they they, they found Hazrat Ibrahim trying to do things and destroying the idols and all. And you must remember when they said that, that make a fire, and throw him into, because if you look at it from a point of view to say that in this incident took place. And when we notice now, if you go, many of you may have gone to some functions, you find, uh, especially, you know, in, in certain Tamil, Kavadi and things like that people may have known that people do fire walking and they, they, they are motivated in such a way that the fire does not burn them. You see, so in the same way you find that if, if Allah had to say, Ya Naru Kuni Bardam was Salaman, I would not count it as a miracle. I would say this is a natural phenomenon. You follow? So, so what is the actual thing is that Allah does not actually send us miracles like, uh, you know, magic things are happening in front of us, like the peace of come, he says, I can fly from here. And while I was making salat, I saw a dog entering into the Kaaba and his pet and the dog ran away, things like that. You see, so you find in the nature of man, it is something that he wants to say that, you know, if you study Sigmund Freud, he tells you that this darkness, the fear of darkness, and, and man wants to know you know, he wants to always see things beyond, you know, uh, his, his, this thing, his, you know, of the unseen and things like that. So therefore, you see what happens as time goes on. Today, a thing may be a, a miracle. Today, it could be explained. You see, like imagine for the Bedouin when he was told, right, there is male and female in plant life. Perhaps to him, it was a miracle to say how. Oh, I can see a flower and a flower there. I'm a man, my wife is a, a woman. 
Do you think there is man and woman in a plant? To him, it could have been a miracle. Or for instance, when he was told about Kamara Munira, you see, the, 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 the moon does not have light. It is lit by another form. So to him, it must be thinking now, what is this? You see, so as time goes on, you find, and if you read the story about Musa throwing the snake, these are allegorical. Because you see, the, the, the Egyptians, they had this belief about the snake power. And, and they, they, if you look at the history of the Egyptian, right, you find that they, they had some kind of, of, of a fairy tale or a tale about the power of the snake and it was symbolizing something. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, you go and destroy that snake. You follow? So, so you got to understand these miracles from the point of view of allegorical. This is what my contribution to this. But if you want to, you want to comment on that, as he as he says, hand up. I'm going to come back to you as he's actually go down the left side. So please, I'm, I'm not going to forget. No, I'm sorry, back. my my leg hand was not up. Sorry. Oh, okay. Just, okay. Okay. No sorry, do you want to comment? No, no, nothing. Okay. Let's move on. Sheikh uh, Jazakallah for that uh, comment. Uh, Thanks. Uh, let's go, Sammy. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, no questions. Okay. Right. Uh, Ahmad Esani. No questions on my side. Okay. Uh, Sadi, could you admit? Okay, I'm admitting Kasi. Right. Uh, Uncle Anba. You don't ask a question, I'm going to officially give you anybody for this part of, you know. Your view, so you better ask the question. Assalamu alaikum. Salam. Can you hear me? Yes. Is, is, is all miracles allegorical? Because Yunus Salam also was swallowed by the whale, I don't know how many days, and then spat out. So those are physical things that are being told. So is it all allegorical? Let me just put that to Sadiq. Sadiq, the person you just used that these are uh, allegorical. Okay, some of them may not actually be allegorical. It may have uh, happened. Like, you know, in a way, there could be a rational explanation uh, to it. I was speaking with Riaz the other day. He says, if you have a big web, there might be a, one of the family of the blue whales that are big enough to hold a human in because maybe they eat the food they eat, the acid in their stomach may not be so uh, strong so that it will harm, uh, kill you too quickly. So it's possible that it, he may have stayed in the stomach of the whale for a while until he was spat out, whatever it is. So there could be rational explanations to some of them, but others may be allegorical, but I also feel that, maybe I don't know enough, but if you look at this example I gave what, um, the crossing of the sea. To me, it seems that it, it could have been also, uh, maybe it's allegorical, but maybe it could have been a physical thing out of, we maybe don't understand it now, like Aman said, it maybe in future science, we might discover something else. But uh, so some of them may be allegorical, some may be physical, some may be, there may be rational explanations to those as well. Or some may, yeah, I don't think they'll break the laws of physics. Uh, the laws in nature that Allah has sent totally, but they, uh, but uh, they, they seem to be a, a intervention out of the, the normal cause of, of life also. Are you okay with it? Thanks, I'm done. Okay, perfect. Zakala. Right. Asif. Uh, Zakala, nothing from my side. Okay. Right. Uh, Bashir. Bashir. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Maf, I joined in a little late, so just to understand that we're saying that there will be. No more miracles after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but those that occurred before, most likely some were, were 
were, were mir- miraculous and some have some explanation within the laws of physics. It's just, just for me to catch up. And the other thing is what, you know, in some of these, what we perceive as, as, as miraculous, what role do maybe gene play, for example, the, you know, with, with, with um, Suleiman and the, and, and the, 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 the throne of Bilkis and so on. So is that something that could be seen as miraculous, but in fact is because of, due to the nature of Allah's creation? Interesting questions, Bashir. Uh, yeah, that one, it's, it's a bit difficult to answer. I haven't got an answer for that. Uh, can, I, can I say something to that uh, question, please? Okay. So I, before, before, I, I just, it just, it just sparked your thought, right? There were, okay. there were three parts to the question. Sorry, do you want to comment on any one part of them? Then I can okay, so the first, the yeah, the oh, first okay. part is, I, th- I think the, the other parts, I agree with, like he summarized what, what basically I was saying. So, so, so the one of the miracles before the problem started, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, with this, the miracles have stopped. If we, we we see that as miracles, I think they may have possibly been a couple of instances of miracles, but most of them, uh, we, we, if you look at them, it it doesn't. Uh, we we we'll find a rational or physical. Uh, uh, it will fit into the natural law somehow. Yeah. So that's the first point. The second one was. Um, first one is miracle. The third one is gene, right? Um, yeah. The third one was what the yeah, Suleiman Ali Samana Jin, yeah. That that I got no answer so. Okay. Um uh, Aman, you wanted to come in? Just do it just with the context of uh, no future miracles since that time. Um my my take on it, and this is just an uh this from my reading is we've had humankind has advanced scientifically from that time significantly. I mean the Arabs were far ahead in the scientific world, and obviously now we 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 just going better and better into science. So, and, and as I said earlier, miracles are science unexplained. So people may not understand something, you know, like if you took uh, a, a globe and you switched it on 2000 years ago, the guys would be, that's a miracle. You know what I'm saying? So just, just bear that in mind. Maybe the Quran is also saying that the human being's scientific knowledge is advancing. That's why it couldn't, there could be no miracles anymore because most of uh, most of these so-called miracles will be explained by science. Okay, so so Bashir, the one on the on the gene, uh, I think that's that's relatively un, sort of unexplained. Sometimes what we tend to do is write things off to you know when we, when we can't explain to the gene force. In the meantime, as science discovers things over time, we realize it wasn't the gene; it was actually just a scientific phenomenon. Uh, there was an interesting book by. Uh, uh, Dr. Karim, uh, Jinx, Jalu, and Jin. I don't know if you read all of that book, but that's you know uh, quite interesting about the phenomena that were that were uh, attributed to Jin, where there was just a lack of a scientific explanation, and then as things became clear, it was then found you know uh, there were rational scientific explanations for, for things. So uh, I think in some way where Islam needs to play its part, where you're merging religion and science, not treating these two as two separate irreconcilable entities. So maybe the approach just needs to change worldwide. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think yeah, there's a lot of unknown within this whole the context of everything. But yeah, I think it's 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 nice to have some sort of context that not everything is because there's no explanation doesn't mean that you know that it, it makes it a miracle. For example, yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I understand. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Kasim, over uh, your question. Um, no questions, Zakla. Okay. Yes, um, Assalamualaikum. No questions, Zakla. Okay. Uh, Doctor Ryan. Salam, how are you? Waalaikum salam. Sorry, I'm driving. Me, I'll... If I, I'll log in later if this still on. Okay. Right, say. Um right, Dawood. No, I'm fine, thanks. I see nothing on my side. Right. Uh Dr. Kiraus. Salam alaikum. Waikum Saran. Hello. 
Sorry, the line is a bit faint going away. Faint, can I, can I try again? Uh, any better? Yeah, it's a bit better now. Better. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, we, we're going to find, you know, Rabi al um, uh, you know, the, the, the miracle that Rasulullah will come up. Uh, I think it is Surah Tama where they talk about the splitting of the moon. Doc, sorry, I, it's, it's, it's a bit faint again, Ma. Okay. I, I got the Rabi al part. Yeah, you know, you know, we're gonna talk. They're gonna talk about the the miracles of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, in this month. You know, uh, being the prophet. Uh, yes. Uh, and 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 uh, a common one that comes up is the splitting of the moon. The splitting of the moon. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, or or the hair that they have that grows. Um, I, I want to know if 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 Sadiq has a comment on that or anybody else. Um, and, and, and just one thing about, I think Sadek uh, put up a, um, a, yeah, I think it was chapter 28, I'm not sure which verse was it, uh, about the suckling of Musa alayhi salam, uh, where um, Allah ordained him not to suckle, you know, um, so it is, it is uh, something that uh, wasn't a natural phenomena, but it was ordained in that leads me to the intervention part of it. But I leave that for later. Just a comment on, 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 on the splitting of the moon. Was there such an, an incident on it? So, so Doc, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm going to try and just, just uh, uh, say it back to you, uh, just so we all understand the question. It wasn't to clear the line. The one is the miracles of the Prophet Yeah. The, the, the right? And whether any were performed by him. Yeah. Right. And uh, there was a second part to it. Uh, you know, the, 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 the hair, uh, the Rasulullah has, you know, that it's growing. They, they consider it part of Rasulullah's uh, 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 miracle. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 The, ba the Bar Mubarak. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, right. Please yeah. comment on that. Okay. Okay. All right, Sadiq. You are probably an expert on Bar Mubarak. <laughs> Okay, just uh, in terms of miracles, uh, for, um, 1759 says that Allah stops sending the signs of, of miracles. That's Surah 17, verse uh, 59. And uh, also, if you look at um, 26, verse 3 to 8, that Allah says we should look at a message and uh, the signs in nature. So the splitting of the moon, I, 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 don't, I don't see it as um, yeah, something that the Prophet did. Uh, the Pal Mubarak, the hair growing, I, I don't know about it. Maybe Nazir can give a scientific explanation for it, but I don't know about it. But the miracles as such, I, I believe that uh, it was already stopped by the time that uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. So the, the, no prophets, uh, he, he as a prophet didn't bring them any new miracles or signs of that sort. Sari is the first that talks about uh, uh, the Mushrikeen asking the Prophet Sallallahu to produce miracles. And he says, Hal kuntu illa bashara rasula. Nay, I am nothing but a human messenger. It's in Surah 18. Do you want to find it verse quickly? I had a similar one, yeah. Um... You had a similar one, that's right. Uh, where, they, where, they, where they ask for signs, but... Uh, uh... Could be one of these ones. Yeah, they, 17, uh, 90 to 93. Say, glory. Uh, now we shall not believe in you mounting until you sent uh, on a book to us that you could read. Say, glory to my Lord. I am nothing but a man, a messenger. If you look at the earlier verses from 90 onwards, they're asking for all fanciful things. Yeah, yeah. So we shall yeah. believe in you until you cause a spring to gush forth, until you cause a garden of date trees and vines and cause rivers to gush forth getting abundant water, or you can't cause the sky to fall to pieces as you promise us, uh, or you bring the angels before us. So they wanted these type of miracles from the Prophet. This was a demand of the of the, of the Mushrikeen. And it's actually quite puzzling why today we spend so much of time in Rabiul Awal talking about the miracles of the Prophet when, when it's quite clear that his miracle was the Quran. 
uh, the ayah that he left behind was the Quran. So at the end of all of this, he says, glory to my Lord, I am no more than a human messenger. So, so I think this, this verse actually sets the tone for the fact that there, a, a reliance was never placed on miracles to spread the message of Islam, and nor were there any miracles per se based on this verse, because then the verse would have been worded differently to say, but I have produced X, Y, and Z, and you still don't uh, believe. And the only thing that uh, what Allah keeps referring to is the Quran. So I think, Doc, this, this can be a very good, uh, this set of verses can be a very good answer to those who want to, you know, focus on these types of sort of miracles, which are nowhere to be found in the, in the Quran. And about the splitting of the moon, that Ikatara to one al Qamar is basically talking about the splitting of the moon to come on, on or, or, or the rendering asunder of the moon. And the same, the same wording is used for the Sama as well. And it will be all be shattered on Judgment Day. So it's talking about an event that will cause ultimately the end of, of, of the world, uh, as, we, as we know, and not where the Prophet pointed to the moon, split it, and, and showed that as one of his miracles. Uh, I think scientifically, it would have you know, caused a lot of problems in the earth. But the verse clearly, the wording of the of of, of, of the verse, if you find it word uh, in Shikha, uh, uh, it, it, it it occurs three or four times in the, in the Quran in relation to uh, the natural order of earth being shattered, the the sama the sama wat or the earth or the or the or the moon itself. Okay, is that is that okay, Doc? All right, can I can I move on? Doc, you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move on. Thank you, thank you, Oki. Thank you. Right, right. Uh, where are we? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I see you got your hand up. Can I come back to you? Can you just hold that thought? I just want to clear the other questions. So, maybe there's one or two things that you know you'd like to add later on as well, right? So, I just want to go down my list quickly. Uh, uh, Hussein? No questions from my side. Right. Like that. Um, next question, Junaid Valley. Uh, no questions on my side, Jazakallah. Okay. Dinky? Uh, <clears throat> alaikum. can you hear me? Salam, yeah, we can hear you. Um, I joined in a little late as well. I just wanted to ask, you know, did you cover uh, <clears throat> Sheikh Abdul Samad Abdul Qadir talking about, um, you know, the belief that, uh, you know, the common belief rather that uh, Isa al Islam was born without the intervention of a father. Um, the verse I think he discussed was, you know, when the angel came to Mary, he announced that she will have a son and so forth. Well, what is the final analysis of this? I mean, do we accept that, uh, or, you know, what, what the rest of the Christian and a lot of the Muslim world also believes? that Jesus was born miraculously. I still don't see any evidence of that in any of the verses of the Quran as such. And it is still my conviction that he had to have a father. Um, maybe I'm, I'm saying this and I sound a little bit blasphemous, but I just want to know if there's any clearing up of this uh, discussion as far as that issue is concerned. Sorry. Yeah, I haven't looked into it too much. It's to me, it's a headache of a topic. But uh, I had a conversation with uh, someone who used to be in Alka some time back, Kabir, and he sent he sent Riaz some information. So I don't know if I don't know if Riaz is on today, but he can maybe send you some. There is some rational explanation that he gave. But uh, yeah, I don't have anything for it on my side. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Okay. We we'll move on. Uh, let's go, Nazir. Uh, no, nothing for my side. Right. 
Rafiq. No question, thanks. Okay. Sh Shabir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I just want to ask, just for some clarity, what's the difference between magic according to the Quran? And uh, you say there are certain terms that describe magic or indicate magic and uh, miracles. Okay, I would say I would say that magic is uh, what you call this. It's, it's sort of deception, you know. It's it's not real. It makes you perceive, makes you think in a certain way. Well, that's not the case. Whereas miracles may actually be the case. It uh, it seems it's uh, like you know it's it's something that happens actually, which you can't maybe we can't explain it. So, so, so if I was asking this question is to say what we perceive as miracles could be magic. So even if we think it could no, not be explained something. and we say, I mean, the key, key word is deception. Now deception <laughs> would encompass that specific psychological control. So what particularly could have happened? Yeah. Is, yeah. Okay, carry on you. Now, I'm just saying that if you look from the Quran example in the Quran, it seems that uh, uh, looking at Musa al Islam's story again, the Pharaoh asked for magicians to come, and uh, they they bewitched the people with their, their rods and ropes, whatever it is. But when Musa al Islam did his thing, then it 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 showed that they, what they did was just fake. So if you so just, could... just looking at that, is the difference between the two. Could Allah have not have made Musa? So magic a isn't real. So what, uh... I mean, look, the ayah says, and it appeared to them as a snake. Now, what could Allah could have done? He could have made uh, Musa, Musa and given Musa. It it? There's, there's two, two verses uh, that it says that it was a, uh, it was a snake for Musa. Islam. Doesn't say the, it doesn't say appear or like a snake. There are two, two or three which says like, but uh, there are also another two or so that says it was a snake. Right, now, even Musa himself had got fooled by his own trickery. Because if you're going to look at it and you want to try and explain the logic of the, of the statement, and you're going to say, let me discount a miracle because it seems unnatural, then the only way you could perceive it as something out of the ordinary is through deception. So if these were magicians that Firon had brought in to try and trick Musa, Allah had made Musa a better magician than them. So they even saw what they perceived it. They perceived it to be a snake. And Allah tells them it, it wasn't a snake. It was still a stick and it was always remained a stick, but they saw it as a snake. So what I'm just trying to get at, there are many other why, ayahs why, in the Quran. Why? The question is, why then did the magicians? Uh, because the magicians had, Musa, because they know what because they the magicians had, 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 they know had, what they're doing. Exactly. exactly. What Musa so the thing is, so what exactly what skills they had on how yeah. deception works? Yet Allah deceived the deceiver, so that that made them realize that you know what there is a stronger deception. Now that's what I'm just trying to get across. Is whether we look at miracles that will come and, and, and become and explain themselves through the advance of science, it's possible. I mean, there are so many ayahs that are puzzling. We can't put an understanding on it right now. But there are many verses that we can look at it and we think about it. We can say, you know what? There is deception. So there is another skill that people can have to deceive and you can make it appear as a miracle. It has a lot to do with the knowledge you can gain in, the, in those specific skills. And you can deceive them psychologically as well. So the argument that I'm just trying to put forth is not everything is a miracle. Maybe none of it is a miracle because it's got to still follow specific laws that Allah has created. And like I said, we, like Ahmad said, we'll catch up to that at a specific time. But what we soon are till now, people are using these skills and you think it's miraculous, but it's actually skills that they have learned. Okay, that's basically all I've got.
Jazak Allah. Okay. Jazak Allah, Shabir. Let's, let's move on. Uh, Sumaya, any question, comment? Assalamu alaikum. No questions. Thank you. Hello. No questions from me. Thank you. Okay, it seems maybe Osman lost his uh, connection. Hossi, are you there? We can move on next, then Yunus. Yes. I'll see you back. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did we get to my ask question? Yeah, she had no questions. No, you know, so. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Yunus, is Yunus done? Yeah, I couldn't hear him. Okay, uh, Yunus, any question? You're, he you're he can't speak, it's, over, it's unmuted, but we can't hear him. Okay, uh, then let's go to Sheikh Abdul Samad, and then we come back to Yunus. And I see Asif's hand up as well. So first, Sheikh, over to you, and then to Asif. Yeah, can you ask? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, Jim. Okay. So here Allah is asking about himself, who is right, the originator of the firmament and the earth. And he says, Anna yakunu lahu walat, walam yakun lahu sahiba. How can he have a child when he does not have a wife, in other words? So that is his law. Right, so so we expect him to, to practice that law everywhere. That is what Allah's law is. That to produce a child, you had the agency of both mother and father is necessary. And another thing is talking about miracle of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is in Rabiul Awal. There's two things we have to bear in mind. Now, the first thing is when Allah's, when the Quran was revealed, right, Allah Ask the kuffars, the, the, the great Arab poets and everybody, Wa in kuntum fi raibi mimma nazzalla ala abdina fa'atu bi suratim mim misli. If you are in a doubt concerning that, what we have revealed to our servant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so fa'atu bi suratim mim misli. Produce a surah like it. And that is what they were asked, right, to challenge the Quran. They will know Allah, Allah did not say the Nabi, or via the Nabi say the Kufar, okay, bring us a miracle like we have gotten a Quran. No, he was told, Fatu bi surah timimisli. So the Quran itself was a challenge. And as we heard the, the verse quoted so often, that Allah is saying to the people that you are asking for so many things, but I have sent you the Quran and yet you do not want to believe in it. And then now in the month of Rabiul Awal, we are. Instead of praising all the miracles of the Nabi and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah has commanded his Nabi, Qul, in kuntum tuhibun Allah fattabi'uni, that if you love Allah, and the way to express the love of Allah, fattabi'uni, that you follow the teachings of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is the Quran. Thanks. Right, Asif, see your hand up. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Um, 
in terms of miracles, would the mirage be considered a miracle? <coughs> I'd just like to know your viewpoint on that. So, uh, sorry. <coughs> yeah. Um, from the Quran, yes, you say. Yeah, from the Quran, you don't really find any 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 proof of of this too. So, from the Quran itself, you can't really find any of the events that are said to have happened, and uh, and justify it as a miracle. So I, I don't know. Okay, so after what 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 Sadiq is saying is based on 1757 or 1759 that he quoted, uh, uh, you know, none of the events uh, uh, pertaining to the miracles has got any basis uh, in in the Quran. Uh, I see Sheikh hand up again. Sheikh, is your hand up? No, 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 no. So uh, not. okay. Right, so basically, I said to answer that, Sadiq is saying, no, there's no basis in the Quran for any miracles that the Prophet uh, performed because the Quran was his miracle. Are we okay? Okay, Jazakallah. Perfect, Jazakallah. Uh, right, I don't see any other uh, hands up for questions or comments. Uh, I think I've covered everyone. If I left anyone out, I'm sorry, but you've got a chance to raise your hand now. Uh, otherwise, I'll be closing. Jazakallah for your participation. Uh, next week, uh, we've asked uh, Chef Abdul Samad Abukada to do a topic on marriage, and the week thereafter, you'll do one on divorce. So uh, please join us and uh, invite whoever else uh, you'd like to join. I think these discussions are important from a social perspective. We know what's happening in our community. Uh, lots of uh, divorces taking place, uh, lots of un-Quranic things taking place pertaining to divorce. But I think Chef is right, you do the topic of marriage first. And they are taking to the topic of divorce. So, um, Jazakallah for your time. We'll see you all next week, same time, same place. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.